What's going on, everyone? Hope everybody is holding up in today's markets. Hope you're holding up a lot better than my hair because I cut it off, sadly. My hair is gone. I'm super upset about that. Not really. But um, anyways, guys, so right now the global crypto market cap is at $1.52 trillion, and that is a 4.3% increase over the last day. The crypto markets have been slowly but surely showing some signs of life and recovery. Do you honestly think that we can resume the bull market and that things will get better towards the end of the year or do you think we are heading straight into a bear market please leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know what your opinions on this because i definitely want to know what you guys opinions are on this situation right now with crypto so let's go ahead and look into the actual um market and see what's going where and where i personally believe things are going really quick before we cut into the news here so let's go over the top five here so of course number one is bitcoin trading at thirty six thousand three hundred and twenty three dollars and it is currently at a total market volume of 35 uh let's see what that is uh, 35 billion so anyways guys uh ethereum is number two right now at two thousand two hundred and eighteen dollars and is up a total of 16 percent in the past seven days we have tether at number three now this is the very controversial thing with me the fact that tether is at number three right now is very alarming to me not only because of the whole binance situation with things going on with binance and stuff like that but also because if the market is presumably going in a bullish notion then um i'm not sure why a stable coin would be on the top three that means there's still a lot of cash sitting on the sidelines because people are feeling uneasy about where the market is going and usually when you see a um stable coin placing on the top gainers and like in the top like this that usually means that we're probably going to be heading down now i'm not going to say that always is the case but in most factors, when you see a lot of money and volume going into stable coins, that's usually because the money's being pulled from everything else. And when that happens, of course, once the money comes from everything else, that makes everything else drop and brings this up to where it's at. So anyways, guys, let's continue because um, I wanna get into the news here. So we got Binance at number four and Cardano at number five. But um, pretty much, guys, the market has been doing pretty decent. As you can see here, seven day total for Bitcoin is up 14 percent on the 24 hour. It's only 4.4 percent, but we're at least making some movement, especially trying to get away from that thirty thousand dollar threshold down there, because that's like the scare zone for a lot of people like mentally. So anyways, guys, let's go ahead and look into the Bitcoin charts here. So honestly, even though I did open up with the uh, seven day percentages and stuff like that i really only pay attention to the 24 hour moving average most of the time in the hour because those are going to be what is going to really tell you where the market's heading as far as direction goes i mean the one year you can use that in the um all time max just to kind of see like what the previous trends have been but honestly guys at this point um there's so much different things going on in the market compared to back in 2016 2018 that it's going to be really really hard in my opinion to use previous um, cycles and things like that because there's a lot of different factors coming into play like regulations and um, adoption and stuff like that so this is going to be a very very tricky year to uh, kind of like predict right now and a lot of people are trying to do that right now and they're trying to predict and i really don't think anyone's really going to be able to call this one on the head but um anyways guys as you can see we are coming down in a downwards fashion and kind of catching um traction right back here at the thirty-five thousand dollar range and from what it's looking like right now guys it's looking like $35,000 is where we're going to kind of hover at for right now until we can uh, break the resistance at around $3,600 in the $3,600 range, guys. I honestly feel if we can pass $37,000 um, $37, and get into the $38,000 range, then we can definitely see some very, very bullish sentiment setting in. And I think we can actually see a lot of altcoins and Bitcoin kind of pull the whole market with it. And I really think that once we pass 38,000, I don't think we're looking back, guys. But 
on the downside to that if we are actually able to go back down to about 30 grand i think that's when a lot of people's like mental triggers are going to set in because um emotionally they just seen the market kind of have a small rally they got very very um hopeful and then out of nowhere we're back down at 30k people are really really going to start giving up on the markets around then and a lot of the um retail traders are going to start pulling back and we're going to see some bad things happen in my opinion but anyways guys let's get into the news so first up guys even though i said that bad things may happen doesn't mean they're going to happen and that is because there is a lot of positive coming into the crypto space such as this here adults in el salvador are going to be getting 30 dollars in bitcoin as the nation unveils details to make crypto legal tender and when i read this guys keep in mind that there's also other countries that are following suit behind el salvador so this is going to be very very big and even though um this isn't going to move the market up a whole lot of percentage as far as bitcoin goes it may move it up a percentage or two but it's also going to introduce a ton of people to the crypto space which may bring in money that way so just keep that in mind guys because some of these people that actually do get involved in crypto after receiving this are going to be hooked as we all are here because you're obviously watching this right now so anyways guys pretty much um the nation on thursday revealed that the bitcoin law would come into effect on september 7th so uh, september 7th could be a pretty decent day pretty, pretty big day in my opinion actually because it's really really close to my birthday for one and for two a lot of people are going to be getting some bitcoin and there's going to be more users and that means more people getting bitcoin that means less supply for everybody else so with that being said this is definitely going to be something that you're going to want to keep on your radar because pretty much with el salvador in my opinion this is how i like to think of it el salvador right now is kind of the guinea pig for the crypto use case argument so pretty much if things go good and el salvador actually can show that like bitcoin is actually doing better for them than them using the us dollar or anything like that then other countries that were actually considering are on the edge of considering adopting bitcoin as legal tender or any other cryptocurrency are going to be more likely to do so so in my opinion i think this is going to be very very good for the near future and this is definitely something that i will be keeping up with all right guys so the next thing i want to talk on right here is the major tax relief for nearly all working families in the united states right now so this isn't exactly crypto news but it is kind of crypto news because when you think about it there are a lot of families out there that are going to be getting these checks that probably aren't going to be opting out of it and choosing not to receive it so they will be getting these checks and when they get this money they are probably going to use it on investments like the stock market or if they're not in the stock market then crypto or for whatever other kinds of investments but i'm pretty sure some of this money is going to make its way to crypto which is going to be big because three thousand to thirty six hundred dollars per child for nearly all working families and you know a lot of people are out there pushing out them babies so with that being said we can definitely expect to see some decent amount of volume coming into the market because if you think about it back when we were getting stimulus checks and stuff like that that's really when the market was pumping guys because there was just money flowing in but um also at the same time that does kind of scare me because they're just continuing to print out money and give out money and i mean even though i like really really want crypto to be adopted and things like that um i just i i don't know how to take what they're doing right now i'm just I'm still trying to learn. I'm still young myself. So this is my first time going through anything like this in my life. And pretty pretty much like anybody else my age, we're just going as, we're just rolling with the punches, man. So I'm just learning from what's going on here. So hopefully we can prevent something bad happening in the future if anything bad is to come from any of this. So, but anyways, guys, this is definitely something to keep your eyes on because with all of this money coming into the hands of many Americans, you definitely can bet your ass that there's going to be a decent amount of money making it into crypto. And you can bet that there's probably going to be a lot of people spending money on unnecessary things. So anyways, guys, I just wanted to touch down on this. So let's get on to the next one, which is Bitcoin and privacy. So here's some more 
positive news for Bitcoin and crypto in general. So the new privacy update to Bitcoin's network has been approved, the Taproot, which will upgrade and improve digital signatures and clear paths for smart contracts, guys. So the Taproot is going to be making its way, guys. It is scheduled for November and the changes of the uh, digital signature algorithm underpinning the system in such way that the complex transactions will have an added layer of anonymity to them. So the really big thing is the news that this clears up the path to make smart contracts more accessible, guys. So something that could broadly increase the scope of applications that can operate on the blockchain. So approved by Bitcoin community, the privacy update brings much desired features, guys. There's a lot of maxis that are very very excited about this coming up um i'm not a bitcoin maxi so i'm not too up to date on like everything bitcoin um i know this is going to be okay for bitcoin but honestly guys i don't think it's going to be much of a huge change in my opinion because what's already been done is done in the minds of um many people as far as bitcoin and privacy and whether or not they think that bitcoin is used by criminals and stuff like that and that whole spiel right there guys so <laughs> as far as like that i think people who have their minds made on that situation already have their minds made and i don't think the taproot is really going to change any of that I mean, it will definitely make it better for certain individuals who are actually utilizing Bitcoin for the reason that it was meant to be utilized for instead of actually using it to make cash. But other than that, guys, um, I don't really see too much coming from the Taproot upgrade. I am pretty interested to see how it pans out in the future as far as after it's already been implemented and whatnot in November. But um, anyways, guys, I'll definitely be keeping my eyes on this just to kind of see how things go with it from a far standpoint because that is very very interesting to me actually because the whole smart contracts and digital signatures thing as far as bitcoin goes i mean it's been pretty wild pretty long time since bitcoin has actually had an update so with that being said that would be really interesting to see how um, they tackle that but um anyways guys let's go ahead and look into the next thing all right guys so another thing that i'm looking at that's going to be very very good for crypto and ethereum in particular is the fact that eip 59 is i mean eip 1559 is drawing closer and with that happening ethereum has surged as much as 10 percent guys so you can definitely expect ethereum to continue to move up the closer and closer it gets to having eip 1559 come up and then on top of that we have things going on with ethereum classic and then we also have eth 2.0 which is coming sometime next year so with that being hopefully <laughs> so with that being said there are some key takeaways here because ethereum did rally to 10 percent last night on sunday and a lot of the crypto uh, gains that we're seeing came with uh, Bitcoin rising only 5.5%. So Ethereum is still continuing to outpace Bitcoin, which is a very, very big factor to take into consideration when you're looking at the um, two cryptocurrencies. So in my opinion, guys, I really, really do believe that eventually that we could see uh, Ethereum actually flip Bitcoin as time goes by. Uh, a lot of people are kind of like doubting that this will ever happen. But I'm thinking with time that this can happen within the next couple of years, we can see Ethereum continue to outpace Bitcoin if it can continue to prove its dominance as far as use case goes. So with that being said, Ethereum's highly anticipated EIP 1559 update is due to set pace in July, which is next month. July starts tomorrow. So with that being said, you definitely want to keep your eyes on this, especially with Ethereum only being around $2,000 right now. We definitely saw how quickly it rose when um, the bull market was going down. So you definitely want to keep an eye on Ethereum because in my opinion, Ethereum is <laughs> way bigger than Bitcoin. In my opinion, I know a lot of people are probably going to get mad about this, but in my opinion, um, I think Ethereum should really be number one on that list and Bitcoin should be number two to Ethereum. But that is just my opinion. I mean, I, I know Ethereum has its setbacks and its drawbacks, but I still believe that Ethereum is more superior than Bitcoin, especially with the amount of dependence on um, 
the ERC chain. So with that being said, um, we definitely need to keep an eye on Ethereum as far as EIP 1559 goes, because if it doesn't meet expectations, then things can go down from there. But if it does meet expectations and everything that most people was hoping were, uh, were hoping was going to happen happens, then we can definitely see the market have a rally, especially with our ERC 20s. So most altcoins should start rally, rallying around the time that EIP 1559 is released along with Ethereum. So with that being said, this is definitely something to keep on your radar. So last but not least, we have to touch down on the institutional interest that is continuing to rise in the cryptocurrency space. So as you can see here, Morgan Stanley buys over 28,000 shares of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. So that is very, very big, guys. It's a very big bullish sign that they are bullish on crypto long term. So when you see things like this happen, guys, you got to take into account that okay a lot of retail investors are freaking out about the price dipping right now but when you see moves like this being made in the background that really really shows that they are pretty positive that they're going to get a great return back in the long run so with that being said if these guys are going in like this then you should probably be too this is not investment advice because i am not a financial advisor so with that being said please do your own research and make your own decisions but in my opinion, when you're seeing moves like this being made and you know what you know from previous news that I shared and that others have shared and stuff like that, then you can definitely kind of make your own educated decision on where you think the market is going, guys. In my opinion, I really think that the market for crypto is just getting started, guys. This is like 1999 in the uh, dot com era, like internet and whatnot. So with that being said, we have a long ways to go, but it's not super long, but we're getting there, guys. We are definitely getting there. And the closer and closer we get to getting there, the more and more you're going to see things like this happen, but on a bigger scale. So with that being said, guys, Morgan Stanley has been increasingly active in the cryptocurrency space in recent months to meet growing demand from their clients. So basically, guys, you know, when the clients come in and they're demanding they're going to have to provide guys and with that being said i feel like more and more clients are going to start demanding to have certain things available to them that are coming from the crypto space and they're going to have to provide so with that being said you're definitely going to want to keep your eyes on some of the um projects and things like that that Grayscale and Morgan Stanley and other places are actually setting their eyes on because they're setting their eyes on them for a reason. So basically guys, this is going to be crazy because I think within the next like two to three years, whenever we get more clarification on regulation and things like that, we are gonna definitely see a very, very big increase as far as institutional investments and um, institutional interest in the crypto sector. And I I'm already starting to see some of the uh, institutional games that I see in the stock market being played in the crypto space from time to time. It's not happening um, a lot, but it is definitely happening, guys. There are definitely some very weird things going on during illiquid hours and definitely some weird, uh, really, really weird things going on that weren't going on before all of this institutional um, interest was gained in the crypto space. So I'm definitely feeling that it has something to do with uh, institutions getting involved and higher net worth individuals getting involved. But anyways, guys, that's all I've got for here. If you guys would like, you can follow me on Twitter because that's where you can find most of my posts and whatnot. If I'm going to post anything, I can post it to Twitter a lot faster than I can do a YouTube video. So if you wanna follow me on Twitter, here's my Twitter right here, at Raji De Niro. But anyways, guys, if you've made it this far into the video, I really, really do appreciate you for checking out my videos. And I really appreciate you for sticking around and watching the whole video but anyways guys i will definitely have some more content coming to you and thank you for watching i definitely appreciate you i'll see you in the next one